Hello, good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Hajri Shahri, PhD student at Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine at the final years of my PhD. And uh, I'm glad to be with you today to introduce and uh, present my final or oh, recent field work in Uganda about stosomyces and, uh, and the shorelines of Lake Albert. Uh, my talk will be about uh, diagnostic, which diagnostic to use, and why in this poor resource setting. As you can see from uh, photo, teams of vector control in Uganda visiting school age children, collecting samples, urine, and uh, stool and blood, and uh, diagnose them on site and uh, treat them in the same time. So basically, we already published these papers, and we highlight intestinal schistosomiasis prevalence in the shorelines, jarditis as well, and malaria. And uh, we published it in transactions. And you can see here, this is the shorelines. And when you get closer to the shorelines, you can see most of community living close to the shorelines, and kids playing in daily basis where they can catch schistosomiasis. Morbidity of intestinal schistosomiasis is under report. You can see here's clinical presentation of a child having infected with intestinal schistosomiasis. When you do experimental schistosomiasis in animals, you can see the fibrosis in the intestinals as a result of uh, X trap in the tissue. But in China, they do colonoscopy. And you can see blood, which is being used as indicator of morbidity of intestinal schistosomiasis. And also, you can see some blobs there, which is fibrosis. Colonoscopy is rare in Africa, and some part is not available at all. So what we know about schistosomiasis, we do examination, we do treatment, we do SNELS controls. Why we do that? Because we need to know if presequential prevent uh, pre, uh, reinfection, and we need to know where is the transmission occur, and who we need also to include adults, not only school age children, and we need to know where we can raise uh, treatment. So, which diagnostic is nowadays, and in future will gather all these issues together. Actually, what we do, we do a cross-sectional survey visiting five primary schools on the shoreline, and we sample 271, and uh, 258 was eligible for this study. We do two two-day catocasts, two slides in each. We do CCA antigen, we do CLISA antibody detection, we do qPCR as well, and for those who don't know about qPCR. We take stool samples, preserve it in ethanol, do DNA extraction, run it in machine, and you can see this is the result where you can decide positive and negative. But the advantage of uh, DNA detection, we can also do more than schist2. Uh, we can do Giardia, Intamoeba, Cryptosporidium, and other parasites, but Catocas cannot do any, only just schistosomiasis and uh, STH. So does uh, the DNA diagnostic become our platform in future? First, we do sampling, we do mapping, and also we collected some signals. We found some signals hatching cercaria, which is reflecting uh, active transmission. And you can see five schools, three in the shorelines, two Piso and Pisinguro, further away from shoreline, to reflect high transmission setting to low transmission setting to evaluate these diagnostics. So first, we do registration, taking demographic, uh, demogra demographic information. We do sampling, and we test them based on the point care of test to see and get the result as soon as possible to treat uh, the children on site. And taking some, uh, the, all the samples back to the UK to do DNA extraction and evaluating the tag manistry as as diagnostic that should be applied in the future. So basically, in general, across five primary schools, we 
Katuk has given you the lowest preference, 42 percent, but uh, CCA give you higher than uh, Katu, but Tagman give you around 67 percent. Uh, Eliza might be over 75 percent, but when you rank a school based in increased distance from the shoreline, and you can see here and uh, plot all diagnostic together, and you can see here's a wronger school. The high prevalence cattle cats give you around 85%, but all the diagnostic tests also the highest in this site. But when you go further away from the shoreline, in low transmission settings, you see cattle cats around 80.6, but DNA around 25%. So, we need, in Ronga school actually, we need to rise the treatment, twice a year at least, and so we can use CATU, it's, up, it's acceptable, but CCA also give you 100%. But in the Lord's trans uh, transmission settings, we might replace CATU cat by DNA tagman uh, say. Actually, we already published this paper in uh, parasitology, and feel free to read this if you want more details. I'm not going to detail about all of these, but you can see in high transmission settings, we might use applicable tests in the field, which CCA could be do this job, but in elimination stage, we might replace it with DNA or C ELISA as first line. What we need in the future, we need to develop public health strategy in the show line, we need uh, to develop a point of care test based on molecular detection, like RBA, recombinase polymerase amplification, as we did me and Dr. Amaya and other team for Jatia last year, which is promising tool. And we need to rise uh, the presequential treatment in this short line, and we need also uh, document uh, morbidity for schistosomiasis. All of these to bring diagnostic and treatment together. And thank you very much, uh, my supervisor Ross, Michel, James, John, and other team from another institute. And uh, thank you for uh, all the organizer. And uh, happy to answer a few questions if you want, if you have. <laughs>